Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is truly another blessed day in the Lord. Hi, before we move any further, let us go to prayer, followed by scripture. Father, now in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We give you all praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. We love you. And we have faith in you as our only wise and knowledgeable God. Bless us right now. Enable us to hear your word right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Let us go to Scripture. Hebrews 11, verses 1 to 3. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for an assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Amen. This is the word of God to the people of God and let us and the church everywhere join in a course and saying amen and thank you Lord. Faith that pleases God. Today we have three subtopics coming under the main topic, faith that pleases God. Number one, the right substance. If we're going to please God through our faith. Pleasing God through our faith, we must contact the right source, who is God. Having a faith that pleases God. Number three, we must have the right signs and the right knowledge of who God is a man. The book of Hebrews is known widely as the faith book of the Bible. As it presents a long list of names of people who please God by their faith in God. To name a few of these notable persons, we will look at Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Joseph, and a prostitute named Rahab. Having studied such notable people of faith, we find everything God wants and chooses to do in our life. He wants to do it through our faith in him. When we got saved, we discovered the most important thing in our lives is not how much we pray, uh, the amount of Bible we study, or the scriptures we quote, or even how often we show up for worship. It is the faith that we have that God is going to do what God promises us he's going to do. Today we'll look at three subtopics of the faith that pleases God. Just being redundant, number one, having the right substance, having the right source, and having the right sign. The Holy Bible does not give us a definition of faith. However, the book of Hebrews gives us this explanation of faith that pleases God. Hebrews 11.1 1 reads, Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Assurance of substance is defined as that which stands under or a foundation. Faith is the foundation which we stand upon as we patiently wait patiently for God to fulfill and carry out his promise. So faith is our foundation to worshiping God. Faith is our foundation into believing God. Faith is our foundation to worshiping God, uh-huh, and believing every word that God speaks. 
Titus uh, chapter 1 verse 2 reads, This truth gives them confidence that they have eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised them before the world began. Amen. Faith sees what's invisible. Faith hears what ears don't hear. Faith touches what is not yet in our human senses. Faith is the ears and eyes of our soul. It is not the amount of our faith, but who is the focus of our faith? Who is God Almighty who spoke creation into being a reality? Galatians 2.16, New Living Translation reads, Yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not obeying the law. Our faith is God in God who is great and can do great things in our daily lives. The right source. The right source. We talked about substance, but now we're talking about the right source. Who is the source that enables our faith? Who is the source of our faith? Who is the enabler of our faith? Let us answer this question in our next subtopic, the right source. Faith is the evidence of things not seen, which God has promised. Our faith cannot save us. But it is our faith in God who has the power and he it is who saves us by us having faith in the fact that he can save us and deliver us from whatever we might be in, whether it be sickness, tragedy, uh, financial uh, upheavals, whatever it might be. Our faith that God could change our circumstances in God enables God to step in and by our faith fix whatever situation that we're in. We need faith when we encounter problems we can't handle or navigate. The Apostle Peter informs us our trials will show the strength of our faith. Our trials will show us how much faith. We can talk about faith, but now the stuff we get into is going to show the stuff of our faith in God. 1 Peter 1, 7 reads, Your troubles have come in order to prove that your faith is real. See, God allows trouble to show up. You see, the Israelites' faith was tested at the Red Sea. When they looked behind them and they saw a well equipped and well machined Egyptian army, and they had a raging Red Sea right in front of them. So they were in between the proverbial rock in a hard place. They had a choice are waiting for the Egyptians to annihilate them, or they had a choice of walking by faith across that Red Sea. But when they dialed up faith, the Holy Spirit went into motion. The Holy Spirit, which is called Ruach, a wind, blew waters, peeled the water back the Red Sea, a pile of water with power to the left. A pile of water was to the right. And the Holy Spirit dried up the floor of the Red Sea. It was because of their faith. And the Egyptians were I did Hebrews were able to walk over on dry land. 
You see, your faith is meant to bring praise, honor, and glory to God. See, God was honored at the Red Sea because that even made Egyptians uh, take a different look at God about what happened at the Red Sea. Trial reveals and shows the true quality of our faith. Amen? Amen. Faith believes the promises of God's word in the Bible. Faith believes every one of the 66 books in the Bible. Faith believes that God did create the heavens and earth. See, faith believes that Jesus did get up on the third day morning with all power in his hand. You see, the Bible is the bullseye and target of an unbelieving world. The more people sin, the more they attack the church and God's word. See, Satan uses this same diabolical approach to introduce the world to sin. He spoke these words to Satan when he was trying to encourage her to eat of the forbidden fruit that God had Instruct on Adam not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Genesis 3, 2 said, the woman said, talking about Eve, to the serpent, we can eat the fruit of the trees that are in the garden. See, she was saying we can eat the fruit of the trees that's in the garden, but we cannot eat from the tree of the knowledge of good. And Eve, Satan give Eve reasons to know God's command in these words. We say, God knows that when you eat the fruit of that tree, you will know things you have never known before. You will be like God. See, the Satan was full. A trickery. Amen. The right source. The right source. The apostle Peter encourages saved sinners like many of us. He encouraged the unsaved sinners with these words to the benefit of holding on to our faith that pleases God in these words. First Peter 1 verses 24 through 25. All people are like grass. All of their glory is like the flowers in the field. The grass dries up. The flowers fall to the ground. But the word of the Lord stands forever. The word of God would always be powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The prophet Isaiah states God's word will give you strength in these words. The grass dries up. The flowers fall to the ground. But what our God saved will stand forever. See, God's word has withstood the test of time. God's word has stood the test on the times of wars and rumors of wars. Pests in the words, earthquakes and Lords, and God has brought us through every uh, pandemic that a man has uh, engaged the world. And presently, he is doing the same thing in the midst of this COVID-19, which millions of people have died and are presently dying from right now. But we see help is on the way. We see not only light at the end of the time, we see light coming all up in the tongue. But see, it's by our faith in God, those that got faith that is bringing the world to a healing place once again. Just know our faith in God causes God's word to stand forever. The right signs. Next, we're going to talk about the right signs. Having the right knowledge about who God is. See, science 
is defined as in knowledge of a thing or people. But now we're talking about the science of God, the science of the Bible. Science is not just something to test to, but science, a man, a man seeks knowledge. So when we study God's word, we are seeking knowledge. When we have faith in God, we are seeking the knowledge of how God is going to heal us when we step out on our faith in God. The word science is defined as it means knowledge. Faith that pleases God has the right science and knowledge and faith in God. See, our knowledge of God causes us to have that faith in God, which gives us the science and knowledge of God, understand that God is going to do what God says he's going to do. And, and we have the faith that God did create the heavens and earth in and, and six days, and he rested a man on day seven. Faith informs us of where we are going in the future. Faith also informs us where our past has brought us to presently. Hebrews 11, 3 say, By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. See, God said it, and faith causes us to believe what the word say, because the science is in the book. That means the knowledge is in the book. It's in the book. Paul said this about God's created splendor. Hebrews 11, 3. So that what is seen was not made from things that are visible. So that what is seen was not made from things that are visible. The right signs, the knowledge of God. So in the Bible says, study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, this is the science of God. Just having the right science, having science mean knowledge, having the right knowledge of God. So when we study, we get the knowledge of who God is. We get the knowledge of how God operates when we study the word. The Bible say you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Having the right knowledge of God frees us from listening to the confusion of what's going on in the world. Genesis 1 1 uh, tells us in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning. See, this gives us knowledge. See, because there is another thing going on out there. Say the Big Bang uh, theory. That there was an explosion, and because of molecules infused and mutated, we got people and everything in the world right now. But the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. See, if that Big Bang theory was true, let's say that if your car was not running right and the engine exploded, this means your car would get fixed by an explosion. You see, so that doesn't make sense about a Big Bang theory. Only God can speak things into reality through his Holy Word. Only God can do that. And see, this is knowledge that we get from God's Bible. And then our faith in what God say pleases God because we believe what God put in the book, which is called the Holy Bible. Psalms 33, 6 reads, the heavens were made when the Lord commanded it to happen. All of the stars 
were created by the breath of his mouth, by God speaking, the stars came into being, by God speaking and breathing, the moon showed up, by God speaking and breathing, the sun showed up, by God speaking and breathing, the oceans and the seas and the rivers and the stream teeming with, teeming with fishes and all kind of aquatic life showed up. And the faith we have to God did that. Please God that we believe what God said he did. Whenever a person believes, whatever a person believes about God's creation, they believe it by faith. The faith that pleases God is obedience to God's word. All the people mentioned in Hebrews 11 prove their faith by obeying and living out God's word. Amen. The right signs. Faith is not enough to please God. As the apostle Peter speaks thusly. So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. See, a faith that pleases God must have the right substance. Who is Jesus Christ? Faith that pleases God must have the right source, which is the science, the knowledge of the word of God. Faith that pleases God must have the right signs. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. See, this invitation is for you, you, and you and every unsaved sinner. And every saved sinner, every sinner that's straddling a man, the fence between salvation and not being saved. God allowed his son to die for all of us. Those of us who were not attending church, he died for us. He died for us. He died for saved sinners, unsaved sinners. When we believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, amen, we could say at that very moment. And Paul tells us about this faith that pleases God. He said, faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God, studying the word of God, studying to show ourselves truths of God as a workman who don't need to be ashamed, rightly separating the truth from what is not true. God, this is your invitation to Christian discipleship. And Paul goes on to encourage us. Paul, who was known as a chief sinner, who got saved, a man, on the, after this encounter with Jesus on the Damascus Road. Paul tells us, he said, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So he allowed Christ to die to save unsaved sinners. In Romans 10, 9 to 10 reads, when you confess with your mouth 
that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But with the heart, one believes and justified, and with the mouth, one confesses. And it's a once we confess our bad stuff to God, because Scripture said we can confess our sins to God. Amen. He is faithful and right, but cleans us from all of our bad stuff. He would do it for you, you and you. This is your invitation to Christian discipleship.